Hello and welcome to Books of Blood. My name is John and today I've got a book review of The House of Tongues and this is by James Dashner. Uh, and I have never read anything by James Dashner before uh, and he's the guy that wrote the Maze Runner books. I never read those and uh, so when I first saw this book and I saw that he's the guy that wrote it and I thought, well, you know what, I'm a little apprehensive about reading it because I thought it was going to be a uh, young adult uh, horror and I have nothing against that, but it just wasn't what I was looking for at the time. But then I started reading the synopsis and seeing that this is kind of a fictionalized account of the crimes or the murders of a real-life serial killer, uh, Pee Wee Gaskins. He was a uh, serial killer back from the 1970s uh, in South Carolina, which is, of course, where I'm from, and I've read quite a bit about Gaskins. And uh, he was executed in 1991, all right? But this is like a fictionalized account. This is kind of a, the way, the best way to describe this book is it's kind of one of those books about how the sins of the father are visited upon the sun and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't know if you want to say eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth or anything like that, but that's kind of the vibe you might get. But anyway, let me get into what the book is about, okay? So it takes place in two timelines, and it's told in the first person by uh, the character David, David Player, all right? So the first timeline is the 1970s, and this is when, when David is a, uh, a young man, he's a teenager, and he is, for reasons unknown, well, not really reasons unknown, but, um, yeah, I will say for reasons unknown right now, for reasons unknown, he is terrorized by Pee Wee Gaskins, Okay. And I don't say, when I say terrorized, I don't mean terrified, I mean terrorized. Gaskins just seems to have it in for this kid. I mean, he just wants to make this kid's life an absolute living hell. And anyone else that this kid is in contact with, because uh, David has a best friend, uh, Andrea. And I don't want to sound crass because it's not like they're having sex or anything like that, but the two of them do make out and stuff, but they're more friends than they are um, boyfriend-girlfriend kind of thing. So it's kind of like, would this be friends with benefits? I don't know. But anyway, uh, they're friends. Him and Andrea, uh, David and Andrea are friends. So by that, just by association, you know, Andrea is kind of terrorized by Gaskins as well. Um... Uh, now, one reason this may be is because one night as David and Andrea, I don't know if it's nighttime, it might not have been, but one day or whatever, they're walking through this area that they've known to have been walking through for years, and they come upon somebody doing something very bad, and it turns out that it is Gaskins, and it turns out that they basically have just uh, caught him in the act of murdering someone. Okay, so they get the hell out of there. They run past him real fast. But that's really not the reason why Gaskins is terrorizing David so badly. So I'm going to stop right there. Now let me go back to the, uh, go to the other timeline. The other timeline takes place in today. Uh, well, back then, well, 2017, because he's writing it in, in the here and now. And I'm, I don't know when the book was published, but it takes place in 2017. And the same thing is basically happening with David's son, Wesley. David has, like, he's got all these kids he adopted. I can't remember if Wesley was adopted or he's, if he's a, uh, or if he's David's kid by, by birth, but I, well, he must be, I'm going to say he is David's kids by, kid by birth because now him, David and his family, especially Wesley, are being terrorized by Gaskin's son, Dickie. Okay, now that is a fictional thing. I'm going to say that right now. Uh, as far as I know, Gaskins only had one kid, and that was a daughter. Okay? All right, so there you go. So now, why, is, why are these two generations of families terrorizing this other two generations of families? All right, so 
to get to that, we got to talk a little about, a bit about the House of Tongues, and I don't want to go into too much detail about the House of Tongues, but let me just say that a long time ago, you had the Puritans and you had the Quakers, all right? Now, according to this book, the Puritans, you know, they came over, you know, to here, to America, because they were being basically, um, what was that word I'm looking for, um, persecuted, all right? So they got the hell away from where they were being persecuted, then they got over here and they started persecuting the Quakers, okay? So, if I'm remembering correctly, David is a Quaker and Pee Wee is supposed, his generation of families is supposed to be Puritans. So, it's kind of one of those things where, well, our ancestors did it, and now we're going to do it, and there's going to be this big, long cycle and all that. And so, to kind of culminize things, because the book pretty well ends in the same place in both timelines, and that is at the House of Tongues, all right? So, I'm not going to explain anything about what the House of Tongues is, okay? Uh, let's just say that it's gross, and that's pretty much the synopsis of the House of Tongues. So, how did I feel about this book? I liked it for the most part. You know, I mean, I feel like because this book was one, a book that was about a real-life serial killer um, who did some horrific things, I thought the book, some parts of the book could be a little bit more horrific, a little bit... Um, a little bit gorier, if you want to say that, you know. But I know that he also didn't want to go too far overboard with it. So that's a minor complaint on my part. Um, and also the thing about it is, is the murders that happen in, um, in the House of Tongues compared to what Gaskins did in real life, uh, that's like basically saying, comparing a Care Bear to, um, that's basically like comparing a Care Bear to Satan, okay? You know, I mean, basically the murders in this, now they're pretty horrific, uh, a lot of decapitations and stuff, but that's, you know, that's kind of the surface of what, Gaskins did in real life, and I don't know if he actually decapitated anybody, but he did some horrific shit, okay, let's just put it that way, so the two of them, like I said, it's like comparing a Care Bear to Satan, okay, alright, so yeah, that's it, so I said, yeah, overall, I really enjoyed this book, I've always been fascinated by Gaskins ever since I was a young boy, uh, and he was executed in 1991 uh, by electrocution. So there you go. And I read his autobiography. And his autobiography is about, about as shocking as anything you could ever read. Okay. Um, now, he was confirmed to have killed, it was confirmed that he killed 15 people. Uh, and he claims that he killed about 110 people. And there's people that say that he made all this stuff up, but you know what? I kind of wonder about that because at the end of his book, he admitted to doing something so horrific that I just feel there's, if he's going to admit something like that, there's no way that he is lying about the other things that he says that he did. But anyway, that's Apples and Oranges. I really enjoyed this book. Give it four stars out of five. Uh, like I said, I don't really rate books anymore, but since I have to do it on Goodreads, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Awesome. So there you go. Um, and that's it. That is my review of The House of Tongues by James Dashner. Thank you guys for watching. Take care and stay scared. Bye-bye.